Chapter 19 I decided to play along with them, to stall, to act as serious as they were. If they figure out I'm not their commander, they'll do something horrible to me, I realized. I pictured the squirrel's tail sliding down Wart's throat, and I started to gag. How could I get away from them, I wondered. As soon as I escaped, I could report them to someone, to anyone who would listen. Brenda, let me see those seeds, I said, trying to sound as if I were giving an order. My voice came out strong and steady, but my hands trembled as I reached for the bag. I took the bag and carefully unwrapped the twist tie on top, and then I raised the bag to my face, studied the seeds for a long time, and took a deep sniff. No, definitely not chocolate chips. The seeds had a faintly sour smell. Not terrible, but not sweet or chocolatier either. One for each kid, I murmured, eyeing them carefully. One seed for each. The four creeps nodded their purple heads. At least one for each student, Brenda said. That's all it will take to turn them into all the creeps. She snapped her long rows of jagged teeth. It's not going to happen, I decided. No way. I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to get help. I'm going to stop them. But first I had to get out of the woods. Well, we creeps will meet again soon, I said. I handed the bag back of uh, seeds back to Brenda. We must all think of the best plan, then we will call each other and pick a good time and meet again. I turned and took two steps toward the streets. That's as far as I got. Wart's long, bumpy tongue wrapped around my neck. He turned me around by pulling me in with his tongue. But, Commander, I have a good plan, he declared. Uh, good, I said, trying not to gag again. I could still feel the wet, bumpy tongue on my skin. We will meet soon and talk about your plan. No, now, Wart, Wart insisted. Commander, we must talk now. We can put my plan into action tomorrow morning. Huh? Tomorrow? I gasped. I think we'd better wait a day, I started. You see, if we all wait... They eyed me suspiciously. Their purple jaws opened and closed. I turned back to Wart. What's your plan? He took a deep, wheezing breath and began. Tomorrow morning we get to school very early. The lunch room cooks all arrive early. They prepare lunch first thing in the morning. Yes, that gives the chocolatey pudding plenty of time for the crust to harden, I joked. No one laughed. I've been studying the kitchen carefully, Wart continued. After the cooks set out the food in the morning, they take a ten minute break. That's our chance. If we sneak in during their break, we can plant the seeds in the lunchroom food. Everyone eats in the lunchroom. It's a school rule, David chimed in. So every student will eat at least one seed. And by nighttime, they will no longer be humans. They will all be creeps like us, Jarrett added. What do you think of my plan? Will it work? Wart asked. They all stared at me, waiting for my answer. The plan sounds pretty good, I said finally. I rubbed my chin, pretending I was thinking hard about it. I will talk to you all tomorrow and let you know my decision. Their wizardly faces drooped with disappointment. Tomorrow, Wart cried unhappily. But we could do it tomorrow morning, Commander. We could plant the seeds, and by tomorrow night. I raised a hand to cut him off. Tomorrow, I said firmly. They were still grumbling to each other as I turned and hurried away. I expected one of them to grab me and pull me back, but this time, they let me go. I edged through an opening in the evergreen shrubs, and then I started to jog between the bare, trembling trees, across the street, and down the block toward my house. What am I going to do? I asked myself as I ran. I can't let them turn everyone in the school into creeps. I can't let them drop their identity seeds in the lunchroom food. But how can I stop them? If I tell them not to do it, they will figure out that I'm not the commander. They will figure out that they made a mistake. And then what? What will they do to me if they find out I'm not a creep? Will they gobble me up the way Wart swallowed that poor squirrel? My stars started to ache, but I kept running. I pictured all the schools and all the kids in my school turning into bumpy, purple, lizard creatures. I pictured them all in the woods, grabbing squirrels and swallowing them whole. I pictured us all slouching around, slapping high fives with their tongues. Yuck! What am I going to do? I asked myself out loud. I was the only one who knew about the creeps, and the only one who could stop them, and I had to act fast. Chapter 20 Pass the mashed potatoes, Dad said with a mouthful of chicken, and the biscuits, please. 
I passed the food down the table, and I took another drumstick from the bucket. Mom and Dad both work hard, so they don't have time to cook. They usually pick up something on the way home, and tonight it was fried chicken bucket, with a bunch of side dishes. They are always starving when they get home. There's no point in talking to them until they finish their first helping. They can't even hear you over the sound of their chewing. I really wasn't hungry. My stomach felt as if they were tied in knots. I kept staring at the chicken and picturing squirrel. I waited until most of the chicken had been gobbled up, and then I took a deep breath and started my story. There's something I have to tell you, I said softly. They both raised their eyes from their plates, and Dad had a swirl of mashed potatoes on his cheek. Mom reached over and brushed it off with her finger. Are you in trouble at school again, Ricky? She asked sternly. Have the kids been picking on you? No, that's not it, I replied quickly. I have to tell you something. I mean, I need your help. You see, these four kids. Take a deep breath, Dad said. Start at the beginning. Calm down, Mom said. What's gotten you so wired? Please, let me tell it, I cried. They both settled back and lowered their forks to the table. These four kids, I started again. They're not really kids. I thought they were seventh graders, but they're not. They're creeps. They're not kids at all. I mean, they're new to the school. I never saw them before this year, but I thought... Mom and Dad exchanged glances. Dad opened his mouth to say something and then changed his mind. They came here with a mission, I told them. They want to turn all the kids in schools into creeps. They have these identity seeds and a big bag of them. They're going to feed the seeds to all of the kids. I ran out of air. I hadn't really taken a breath at all. I took a long one now and continued my story. They think I'm a creep too. They think I'm their commander because of a message I typed out on the bottom of the school newspaper. They want me to help them turn all the kids into creeps. Horrible monsters! I took another breath. I was so excited and so nervous, I felt as if my heart had jumped to my throat. I leaned across the table and stared first at my mom and then at Dad. We have to stop them, I cried. You have to help me. We can't let them turn everyone into creeps. But what can we do? How can we let people know that they're not really kids? Uh, how can we stop them? You've got to help me. You've got to. I let out a long whoosh of air and dropped against the back of the chair. I struggled to slow down my racing cart, and my parents glanced at each other again. I could see a troubled expression on their faces. Dad was the first to speak. Ricky, he said softly, your mom and I are creeps too. Chapter 21 I gasped and nearly tumbled off of my chair. Mom and Dad burst out laughing. No, actually we're Martians, Dad declared. No way, we're not Martians, Mom argued. We're werewolves. She picked up a chicken bone and pretended to chomp on it like a wolf. We're Martian werewolves, Dad cried. He tossed back his head and howled like a wolf, and then they both laughed loudly again. They really thought they were a riot. You've got to take me seriously, I pleaded. For some reason, that made them laugh even harder. Dad actually had tears in his eyes from laughing so hard. He raised his napkin and dabbed at his eyes. Ricky... Sometimes you come up with the greatest things, he said. He reached over and slapped my shoulder. What an imagination, Mom commented. She shook her head. You really should write that story down, Ricky. It could win a prize. But it isn't a story, I cried. I jumped to my feet and angrily tossed the napkin onto my plate. Why don't you believe me? Oh, we believe you, Commander, Dad exclaimed. Commander of the Creeps! They both burst out laughing again, and I uttered an angry cry, turned, and stomped out of the dining room. I could still hear them laughing as I stormed up the stairs to my bedroom. I slammed the door behind me and shook my fists in the air. I had to find some help. I had to have make someone believe me. I slumped onto my bed and just sat there for a long while, staring at the darkness around the window. I waited for my heart to stop racing and for my mind to calm down. But I couldn't get calm. My whole body tingled and my brain spun. I grabbed the phone off my bedside side table and punched in Iris's number. Iris will listen to me, I told myself. Iris will know I'm not making up the wild story. The phone rang three times. Four. Five. No one's home? Come on, Iris. I begged into the receiver. Be there. I let it ring twelve times before I hung up. I slammed the phone back onto the bed table and after I calmed down a little... I sat down on my desk and tried to do my homework, but I couldn't keep my mind on it. At least the phone isn't ringing and ringing tonight, I told myself. 
The creeps weren't calling me tonight. They were waiting to hear from me, and they were waiting to hear if I okayed plan Wart's plan to go into school early and plant the seeds in the lunchroom food. I slammed my science textbook shut. I will go to school early, I said out loud, but not to meet the four creeps and not to drop identity seeds into everyone's lunch. I'll go to school early and talk to Miss Crawford, the principal. I'll tell her the whole story. I'll tell her what the creeps are planning to do at the school. She'll help me to stop them. I know she will. My clock radio woke me a half an hour earlier than usual, and I clicked it off and listened to a soft patter against my bedroom window. Staggering across the room, I peeked through the blinds. A gloomy, gray day outside. Frozen rain dribbled down. I yawned. I tossed and twisted all night. I got dressed quickly, pulling on a large red and brown flannel shirt and baggy brown corduroy pants. I gulped down a fast breakfast of orange juice and cornflakes. You're up early this morning. Mom commented sleepily. She stood waiting for the coffee maker to drip. Yeah, gotta go, I mumbled. I grabbed my parka and backpack and hurried out to the back door. I pulled my basketball cap down over my eyes and jogged through the cold, drizzling rain. Such a dreary day. Everything looked gray this morning and no bright colors shone anywhere. As I made my way to school, I practiced my speech to Miss Crawford. I wanted to tell the story right, and I didn't. I wanted everything in the right order. I didn't want to leave out any important parts. I passed a man in a gray rain slicker, out walking his Dalmatian. I didn't see anyone else on the street. The school apparently appeared empty when I arrived. The halls were silent and my wet shoes skidded over the floor. I stepped into the front office and the room was empty. The two secretaries hadn't arrived yet. But I saw a light from the principal's office in the back and I heard a cough. Miss Crawford, are you back there? I called. Yes. She called back. Who is it? I heard her chair scrape, and then she poked her white-haired head out of the office door. Ricky! She squinted at me in surprise. You startled me. You're here awfully early, aren't you? I, uh, I needed to talk to you, I stammered. She motioned for me to step in around the front counter and into her office. What's the problem? She asked, closing the door behind me. It's kind of a long story, I began. But would she believe me?